Praise the Lord, dear friends. Thomas Manton IV here. I've been in prayer, and the Lord's been talking to me about something really weighty that is really amazing for the body of Christ. And get ready for, for this, because I'm going to bring you something that I doubt you've heard anywhere. Uh, and something is about to be released for God's people that's never been seen before. It's going to be the greatest day of a wealth transfer and a new beginning and a new season of breakthrough and excellence like we've never, ever seen before. God is about to rain glory and gold <laughs> and wealth and resources upon his people around the world. Uh, you know. I, I'm reminded of the scripture in Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, that talks about the treasures of secret, hidden, dark, all kinds of places, you know, sources known and unknown, things seen and unseen, things expected and things unexpected. God is about to rain a glorious visitation upon those that he's ordained with his blessings. Somebody lift your hands and just begin to just soak in that for a second because uh, it's, it's, like, it's like we've not seen, it's not, it's not been seen yet what's about to happen. No, you haven't seen it. Even if you've had some substance, some provision, some miracles, but what's coming has not been seen yet. Wow, I feel the anointing, Father, Father God, thank you. There is a, 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 a move of economy, of economic awakening, economic breakthrough, like we've never seen before. The Lord spoke to me a couple of weeks ago and told me to begin to declare this. He said, he said, it's a season of economy, a season of economic increase and breakthrough, a season of a new wave of things that, we, that have not been seen before. Somebody lift your hands if you're ready to receive that. People crying about little things like paying house, paying you for your, you know, a lot of people don't have a car, imagine. Imagine not having a car. Whew! First job, get a car. How many, how many, how many want to have your own car, your own vehicle, and not be paying no bank for it? I mean, just buy it with cash, you know, stacks of money, or do a, a bank transfer, a wire, and just have the car, and then pay the insurance, and then get some, uh, Nice mechanics who are not crooks. I have some. If you need a referral, uh, I'll turn you on to some of my, my guys that are good. And uh, get everything the best for less. Never bring your car to a garage either, especially in Africa, especially in Kenya, because you might find that they've replaced everything and lied and did nothing and all of that, you know. And, you know, these people, these people are not destined for the, for the kingdom of heaven. Uh, unless they get themselves together. So there's coming a, a real tremendous blessing beyond any of that. How many would like to own real estate? And have territory for yourself. Have some nice flowers. The flowers are really beautiful in Africa. They're beautiful in some other places too. But, but here you have all these colors. Have, how many would like to have some trees of your own, hedges of your own with all the colors? The purple, the red, the pink, the yellow, those trees that make yellow flowers, white flowers, red, you know, the bougainvillea and all that. It just, it's just amazing. You can have that and look at that and the birds will come and make noise and fly and you can watch them and enjoy your life. How many really believe God has that for you? Amen. Oh, he does. He does. Amen. Why did he, you know, you know what, we, we need to stop this nonsense of religious isms and schisms and letting the devil deceive people and just go back and read the first book of the Bible 
And then the second chapter, you know, the first and the second chapter. God said, I gave you, verse 26, I made you in my own image after my own likeness to have dominion. And then all these other things, he said, seed, you know, to, to, to reproduce and the garden and all of that. And, you know, you know, let me tell you, if you were to ask, a lot of people want to ask this question, who's the richest man that ever lived? Somebody might say Solomon. Uh, wrong. Somebody might say that, that, that king in Africa, I can't remember his name. He had a lot of money. So what? And your first president here in Kenya had a lot of land, right? So what? These are small boys compared to one man whose name is Adam. Adam had control of everything. And don't answer now, but just think about it. I just want to, it's a rhetorical question. Who gave all that to him? Who gave all that to Adam? And who gave him a beautiful creation that he made from his own rib? Put him to sleep, took his, why God, you know, God is very amazing. I mean, uh, I wouldn't call him strange, but it seems strange to us. But to him, it's like, you know, that's the way he, he thought of a way to do it. And if you look at the result, it doesn't matter what the method was. The result was Adam woke up again and saw this beautiful thing in front of him that looked better than any animal. And he said, whoa, man, ha. Huh. And whoa, man, woman, yes, God. So he called, he, you know, God didn't name Eve. Adam named her Eve, which meant uh, delight. She was delightful, yeah? If you see any beautiful woman in the earth, it's because she came from Eve down the line. If you see any handsome man in the, in the world, it's because Adam started the whole thing. And the line came down through him. Now, if you see anybody that's not so attractive, you know, just remember there's sin in the world. And it brought corruption. So maybe some corrupted, it corrupted in the genes somewhere in the lineage. That's a kind of a joke, but it's not really funny, is it? Ho, ho, ho. Don't laugh at that one. But, uh, but the beauty and the wealth and the splendor and everything good started with Adam in the garden. And God was the one who created all of that. So if that was the will of who we call our father, then what, a, what on earth are we doing thinking about anything else but splendor and glory? Oh, my God, I love this message. This is the anointing here. Father God, thank you. Last week, I think it was last week, well, it, you know, like a week for me is a very long time. A week is like a month or two. What happens in my life in a week? In just six, six and a half days or whatever, seven, less than, you know, minus seven days, because if you were in the seventh day and then you went a week later, it's just then the seventh day. But before, I mean, before that, I, I think back a week and I'm like, my God, it seems like it was months ago. Like last Sunday was like a month ago, really. And then if you're tired, you know, you're getting adjusted and things and a month can go by and you're like, wow. 30 days have gone by, like I'm, you know, I'm in another zone, you know, I mean, time is amazing to a life of a busy person, especially someone that's filled with God and his purpose and his agenda. So it was last Sunday, yeah, and the Lord said to me, four names, he said, Abraham, Job, Solomon, and David, not in that order, because Job is the oldest book, right, and then was, who was before him, Abraham or Job, I'm not going to argue about that. And David came before Solomon, obviously, because Solomon was the son. He wasn't the daddy. So David and Solomon. And the Lord said, listen to me. He said, these men were billionaires. Hmm? Billionaires. USD billionaires. Not millionaires. They were billionaires. And the Lord said, think, study these again. Think about these men who you call your patriarchs and try to measure yourself and try to see if you measure up anywhere even close to their life. Hello. 
painful, isn't it? So someone could say amen or ouch. I'll just tell you straight out, I'll just tell you straight out of the box. Poverty is of the devil. Poverty is a stench in the nostrils of God. It never was his plan. It never was his will for anyone. But prosperity, oh, that's really where you'll find God. And people, now see, see again, you see the error going on. People are like, well, it's a prosperity gospel. What do you mean a prosperity gospel? You must be an idiot. You're an idiot. Gone to seed planted and you might have cropped up some other idiots around you to think like that. Because all you got to do is look in the first chapter in the first book of the Holy Bible and then look at the second chapter and the third and the fourth and the fifth. Don't even go any further than that. You've already, you've already uh, 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 have the circumference and the quantity and quality and essence and substance and full abundance of everything that God made for man to have. So the funny thing is, who gets it really depends on who like applies for it and applies themselves for it. Now I'm, I'm helping you in your thinking because you got to start somewhere, okay? Number one, if you don't want to be in poverty, you got to begin to hate it. I'm preaching good here. You have to begin to think, this is not for me. If I just read my Bible, if I just think about the goodness of God and his creation and all the beautiful things he made, how can I live like that? You know? Iron sheets on a pile of mud with an open sewer running through your living room, if you call it a living room. And then you make a church and you tack some other ones together and you call it something gospel fellowship and say, okay, this is our church. Well, is that really the house of God? Now, I want you to, I want you to understand something. Look at the temple of Solomon and look at the tabernacle that Abraham made, or Moses made, rather, and look at the life of Abraham, how great he was compared to all of that. Is there a vast difference? Oh, yes. Now, I could hear somebody's mind thinking, well, that's how it is in the society, and that's where the people are. And you see, now, if you start doing that, now you're agreeing with the devil. If you start doing all that, now you're sticking up for foolishness. You're sticking up for what's wrong. And if you do that, then that's where you'll get trapped. You'll stay right there. And God will say, do you believe that or do you believe me? Remember the scripture is in Isaiah 53. It says, who will believe our, our report? Who? God always asks questions of people. When Adam was missing in action, God said, where are you? God knew exactly where he was but he wanted Adam to locate himself. So even in the midst of, of a law situation, a bad situation, God was still there. Still looking at the son he loved and created. Still looking at the beautiful woman who Adam named, named Eve, the, the, the woman of my delight, my delight. Still looking at paradise, even though it was paradise lost now because of the rebellion, because of the disobedience. God was still there. So the life of Abraham, the life of Job, who was attacked by the devil, not by God, it was the devil that asked permission to attack him. It was the devil that came to attack him. Job didn't really know when, where it was coming from, but he stayed faithful through it all, and at the end he was given double for his trouble. Now he, he had 6,000, he had 3,000 camels, he had 7,000 sheep. Now he had 6,000 camels and 14,000 sheep. He had a lot of land, whatever he lost. He had a family, he lost. God gave him back another family, more stuff. That's the nature of God. Somebody lift your hands and just say, Lord, I received it. 
we, 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 we really need a teacher. We really need a mentor. We really need a prophet. We really need a coach and an apostle. We need a pastor. We need someone to teach us the truth about this whole thing. And I'm glad to, that God's put his hand upon me to do that. I'm so, uh, Lord, I'm so grateful. I'm so thrilled. I'm so honored. I feel so privileged that you, that you would use this, 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 your own son right here to speak this because a lot of people are speaking a lot of different things. Controversy about this and controversy about that. Come on, we're not led, by the way, we're not led by preachers and people in their methodologies in what, what we call quote unquote the church. Huh? We're led by doctrine, which is the word of God. Yes? Isaiah 48, 17 said what? Beautiful passage of scripture. He said, I am the Lord your God who will teach you to profit. P-R-O-F-I-T. Somebody said, when you want a prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T, you have to find a prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T. I like that one. I think the prophet can lead you to profit. Why? Because the prophet is hearing revelation and bringing revelation, and they're speaking creative miracles into existence. Last Sunday, I was in a certain city, town, that's having a problem, and God put me on the platform and had me begin to prophesy that it would be stopped. And the very next day, within 24 hours on Monday, this was last week, this was six days ago, they came and transferred all the government people out of there and began to say, we're instituting a new thing now, and we assure the people of this county and this region that the insecurity and the violence and all this will be stopped. And I stood and prophesied that there was going to be a law enforcement miracle, a miracle in law enforcement to stop the violence. It is on video. It is on uh, 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 video, and you could see it, re request it, and I will be, I'll gladly uh, send you the link to watch exactly what the Lord said. And the news media came behind that on Monday evening to report. And the, they called me, and they're so excited. They said, we, we were amazed at this miracle. It was only one day, within 24 hours of you prophesying, the whole thing got changed and fixed. Some miracles, God, it takes years to germinate because it's a big thing that takes time to develop. But something else could happen just like that, an instant miracle. And people are suffering, people are being killed, people are, their houses are being broken. You know, all this stuff is happening, and God says, no, I'm going to send my prophet to begin to deal with that and speak it into existence. So, and, and, and the miracle will happen. Well, it's the same thing to do with finances. I heard, this, I heard this amazing statement the Lord spoke to me right before I came in here, and he said this to me. You're not ready. You're not ready for this, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say it anyway. The Lord said to me, Son, tell my people, the money is really coming. Amen. Somebody get excited. He said, the money is really coming. Audibly, thus saith the Lord God Jehovah. That's what he said. Something else he said to me. He said to me, talk to me about missions. He talked to me. Uh, a few days ago about missions and uh, all kinds of things of helping people. And the Lord just began to really speak to me about that. And he said to me, he said to me also, uh, the future is so great, the past cannot compare. How many believe that? It's a new season. It doesn't matter where you've been, what's been going on. It's, it's all... It's all just a wash compared to what God is about to do. And you know, the scripture does say that too. In Isaiah 43, 18, he said, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. He said, behold, I'm going to do a new thing, and shall it not now spring forth? Is that Peter? Oh, that's you. There you are. Hey, my friend. Blessings on you, man. Long time, mate. Oh, God. Long time, long time. I haven't seen you people. I love you. You know I do. I really mean that. I do. I love you. Oh, boy. But I feel the anointing so strong. There is a breakthrough coming. 
The Lord said, the money is coming. It's really coming. The Lord spoke that to me privately also. He's been talking to me about some things on that line. And I'm like, yes, Lord, thank you. You know, when God begins to give you an idea, a thought, he speaks to you, even if you're tired or you're busy, just take a moment to say thank you. I started saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I was in the middle of something. And he spoke to me. God can speak to you. He doesn't care like what you're doing that moment. He comes and says something to you whenever he wants. And I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Whew. Lift your hands. Are you ready to receive? So God, of course, has a uh, 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 provision for your life. Amen. House, car, things, Amen. whatever you need to buy, whatever you need to wear, whatever you need to do, whatever you need to shop for, but that's small compared to his plan. Amen. It's not enough, you know, I gotta say this prophetically too, and to teach this, it's not enough for you just to get along and just survive. God wants you to thrive. He doesn't want you to just like make it and have a daily life of existence of this, you know, uh, this and that of something you need and want for your own daily existence. He wants you to prosper so that you can make the world a better place to live. And the midst of times when, when somebody stands up and says, don't sow this, or it's not about that, and other people side with that, and then somebody else is saying something else, and someone else is saying, oh yeah. You know, if people are out of whack, then they need God's correction. God can correct anybody. That's not your business. You, you know, let me tell you what your business is, and I say this without reservation and very boldly. It's your business to prosper I'm going to say it again. It's your business to prosper and succeed for the sake of the advancing of the kingdom of God in the earth. Amen. You're responsible for that. And to wallow in defeat and failure and misery and uh, <laughs> just existing is not the plan of God. God wants you to excel. He wants you to excel, which means to accelerate. He wants you to excel, which, which is the root word of excellence. He wants you to excel, which is the root word of acceleration, speed. He wants you to move. Remember Isaiah 48, 17 again, he said, I'm the Lord your God who teaches you the prophet and leads you in the way you should go. Go is, a, is, a, is, is movement. Go is the first two letters of the word God. G-O-D. Go is the first two letters of the word good. G-O-O-D. Go is movement. And if you're stagnant and stuck, a lot of people say that to me. They're stuck in situations and they have these demonic cycles. And they, they seem to be going around and around and around in their life and they keep moving. You know, the Lord... The Lord is tired of seeing that. Lift your hands. I command complete deliverance to break you out of any cycle of defeat, failure, whatever it is that kept you stuck. Whatever it is that kept you uh, from moving forward, let God open your eyes first to see it, to see that problem, and, and then to see to it that it gets alleviated and broken and destroyed. And you now can get up and begin to walk and move. And God will help you. Oh, yes. If, if your heart is really toward him, he'll help you. He'll help you get out of it. He'll stir you up and make you move. He'll stir you up and give you a new arena. He'll stir you up and give you a new company of people. He'll stir you up and even take you to another geographical location. He'll stir you up and shift you into relationships and connections and begin to get you on the course that he has for you. He's not going to leave you stuck. Amen. And when you look back and begin to see all of that, when you begin to walk and move, you'll be like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, Father. I, you begin to cry and say, Lord, I'm so sorry for losing even a day, even an hour, never mind longer than that. Just, just stuck. 
in a place of obscurity or a place of uh, uh, familiarity or a place of, of non-productivity. My God, I feel the anointing here. Oof. The Lord does not want you to be stuck. He wants you to live in, <laughs> it's funny, he wants you to live an unstuck life. A productive life, a prosperous life. Please, please let me tell you, and you can read the Bible all day, all night, all week, all month, all quarter, all year, uh, all decade, all, all the century, amen, and beyond, and, and find it over and over and over again in the annals of the book, in the doctrine of the book that God had 40 authors write over 1,500 years 1,189 chapters, over 850,000 words with thousands of promises of breakthrough and blessing and the plan of good that he has for his people. Some things, and that's amazing, and there it is. I mean, it's not, it wasn't just one person. And by the way, I got to tell you something else. I, I like to rub it in the devil's face and really hit him with a hot poker, you know? or hit him with the sword and chop him up. Then somehow he's still there, so maybe he like, you know, like in the horror movies, you know? The sci-fi movies, you know, he breaks up and then they come back together. You ever see stupid movies like that? In the movies, yeah? So if you chop the devil up a bit, you know, he probably goes, gets, he, he manages to stay together. But guess what? The day is coming when he won't be together. He'll be thrown into hell, into Hades, Gehenna, to burn, and then after that time when the Lord sees fit, he'll take them all and hell will vomit them, you know, spew them all out and they'll stand before the white throne judgment and be thrown into the lake of fire. And once that happens, you can never return again. I mean, you're there forever and ever gone into outer darkness, never to be found again. Very bad. That's the future of the devil. Hello? And demons that used to be angels and the ugly friends that they have that side with them. How foolish it is to want to be a friend of the devil. There was a song like that some crazy guy wrote. He died of a heart attack when he was 53. <sighs> Famous guitarist. They wrote a song, a friend of the devil is a friend of theirs. I mean, <laughs> you could tell uh, what side they were on. And then he dropped dead of a heart attack. Where'd he go? You know, somebody around here dropped dead of a heart attack one day, was stealing all kinds of money, doing all kinds of things, and then just boom, afternoon, four or five o'clock in the afternoon, whatever time it was, boom, gone, gone, gone. No warning. Like how they were before that moment, that's how they're going to end up in eternity. Lift your hands. Please let your life be on fire for God Please, I beg of you, please. I mean, don't allow any stagnancy. Be in the, in the fire of the, of the Holy Ghost all the time that, he, that you're, you're in the realm of place where he's moving and then God will bless you. He'll protect you. He'll love on you. He'll be pleased. And you'll be gaining a reward for eternity. It's not that you're working for it. I mean, we're saved by faith through grace by his blood, you know what I mean? The worst evil person could cry out to the Lord at the last minute and be saved. Remember the thief on the cross, two of them. One railed at him, was lost. The other one said, have mercy on me. God, Jesus said to him in his agony, turned to him to speak and said, uh, great, great, you're smart. Today, I, I assure you, you'll be with me in paradise, today. And that was the last day for both of them to live. But guess what? Jesus came back three days later and walked out of there and walked for 40 days amongst the people, walked through walls, even tried to eat some fish. They were cooking some fish and Jesus showed up at the barbecue. But he, he was a flesh and bone body now walking around. Isn't that scary? Isn't that scary a little bit? And you think about that. I remember when he was risen God spoke through his voice. This is the power of the prophetic voice. It's so powerful. He spoke by his voice and commanded resurrection. 
And the Bible says that peop de dead bodies in graves begin to jump out also. When Jesus was resurrected, other dead people also were resurrected because the voice of the Lord spoke, and it was so powerful it affected all of creation. This is the God we're serving, but we don't know him enough. I command in Jesus' name, everybody that's under the sound of my voice, you here in this local assembly and you out there in the world watching by video, or however you're hearing this, the, the Lord wants you to rise up in power and to begin to speak against everything that's wrong in your life. If you're stuck somewhere, begin to speak to it today because all things have ears. Jesus spoke to a fig tree and the disciples looked at him and thought, hey, is he okay? They probably said to each other, oh, he's talking to trees. My Lord, this is really deep. This is a little bit mystical here. He spoke to a tree and they thought, whoa, what does it mean? They came back and found the tree was dead. What he said came to pass. Everything has ears. Money has ears. You ever see these guys, you give them a crisp note, especially the new money. Have you seen the new money? Yeah. Hopefully you have a lot of it. <laughs> Hopefully you have big stacks of it. And it's smaller so you can fit more in your pocket now. <laughs> Anybody that says they don't like the new cash, tell them you're a fool. I don't want to be your friend. You just disrespected my friend, which is, which is new cash money, nice new notes. I have so much, if I threw it, I'd hurt you. Oh, yeah, 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 and I, and I took a lot out and put it somewhere. So I didn't want to carry it, I just threw this around. This is, I mean, you should see what I had before I, this is just what I have left in my little bag here, I mean, Jesus. The thousand note I'm not too sure about, but I love this 500, man. My friend is here, Simbo, you see? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. My friends in New York, they call me the Lion King. Look at this money. Look, I have it on the screen. You'll see this later. This is awesome. Ha. Ah, there's Simba. Woo. <laughs> and they made Jomo a little smaller on the other side, the first president. They left him on his statue. You see that? At the bottom there? That's nice. That's in the city center there in the square. The other one, the old ones, oh boy, where's that? They had him like with his face there, you see that? A little bit different. Look at that compared to this. Isn't this nice, what they did? That's the first president, Jomo Kenyatta, there he is. And here's Simba. <laughs> and here's the king, the first president, like a king sitting on the throne. Really cool. And you see it's a little bit smaller, yeah? So some, some lady said, I don't like this new money. I thought, what's wrong with you? Uh, you won't have a lot of it. You can't disrespect it. So anyway, you ever see people, and this is a new thousand note, you ever see, you ever see people when they, uh, you give them money and they crumple it in their hand like that? Every time somebody does that, I correct them. I say, don't do that. You're disrespecting the money. And they jump and they go, oh, they didn't know that. Nobody told them that before. I said, you take something nice and you crush it up like that. What if you, put, you had a baby in your hand and you start pinching and twisting his arm? Disrespect. The baby wants to leave you. So does money. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Here's the 50s. These are nice little 50 notes. I don't know. Who's on this one? Nobody. The king again, Jomo. All right, so. All things have ears. The Lord said the money's coming. You better begin to echo that, echo the prophetic word and say it's coming. Because all that you want, you can have it. All that you want, you can have it. Yes, you can. It's the will of God. If you needed a confirmation, there's your confirmation. I'm God's prophet telling you. It's coming. Amen. Now, American money, you have the, uh, the $100 bills are really beautiful, the green. And $100 is 10,000 Kenyan shillings. You could have as many 10,000 segments and shillings as you want. Amen. You could have as many $100 notes as you want. You could have as many as you want. You could have as much gold and silver and land and real estate 
success in business as you want. Amen. But you have, to, you have to focus on that and you have to get toward it. Now I have to say something a little bit spiritual here for a minute. This is all very spiritual, of course, but really, if you think about it. But you have to be in the will of God. You have to be in the plan of God for him to favor you. God doesn't move everywhere you are. You can't say, I could just be anywhere and God's there. You could, be a to you could be totally in the wrong place and you will not succeed greatly there. You won't have any functionality there. I could just weep thinking about it. Being stuck in the wrong place is one of the most horrible things. God, it's horrible. Can't function, can't move. Your, your mind doesn't work right. Your create, creativity doesn't flow. People don't help you. People don't connect. Man, I feel the anointing here. Lift your hands. This is a wave coming here. You that came here in person today are very smart. Some other people should have been here. But everybody can catch this over the airwaves. But the Lord is just releasing fire to bless my people Amen. and empower them and enrich them. In ways that they've never seen before. It's coming forth in Jesus' name. Boy, the anointing is so strong here. Be blessed, be healed, be delivered, prosper. I want to hear from you. Please write me. I wish I could communicate all that I'm feeling, but I'm saying it the best way I can. But I, 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 I communicate with me. Let's make this an interactive highway. And I'll be talking to you and praying for you. Write me a message, a private inbox on the social media. Use the email. Use the phones. Use the way they did. Communicate. And also sow and give. You're going to see the, the hand of the Lord bring you back uh, phenomenal things. For it is that moment in time right now in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Matthew the Ford. Love you much. See you on the next. Love you. See you on the next broadcast. Amen. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.